maybe answer some of the newsy what? type things? Sure thing. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to our Quartz live chat with meteorologist Eric Holthouse. Uh, thanks for joining us, Eric. Yeah, thank you. So we've got a bunch of questions about the storm that have come in from readers. I will uh, get to those in a moment. But we should probably just start with the latest forecast for this, uh, for this Thanksgiving Eve storm. Um, I'll pull up some of the maps that, that uh, we were talking about, but, but uh, why don't you uh, start there? Sure. So I think we've embedded this uh, live video into a, a, a post that has some of the text written on, so you can follow along if you want. Um, we are, are seeing right now the storm has emerged out of the, the southern Rockies. Um, over the weekend, there was uh, quite a bit of snow and ice in, um, in Arizona, New Mexico, and the higher mountains there. Um, Yesterday, the, uh, the storm caused a lot of, of icing and snow in um, Texas and Oklahoma. You know, this time of year, they're not normally <laughs> experiencing winter weather. So, um, so, yeah, they had to start de-icing planes at DFW, and I think it caused a lot of delays. Um, now the storm is kind of um, just getting ready to emerge off of the Texas coast into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, where it will start to tap into some tropical moisture from the Caribbean. Uh, and that's when things will kind of really start to uh, develop pretty quickly as far as rain. Um, so maybe four or five days ago, the storm was really looking to be kind of like a classic nor'easter right off the, the coast of, of uh, you know, New England with lots of snow. Um, and that is not going to happen anymore. So uh, this is going to be a really heavy rain event mostly. Um, the rain totals, that, which are up right now, um, I think on the screen, um, yep. yeah, three to four inches of snow, or three to four inches of rain, sorry, um, from basically Houston to um, New Orleans um, to Atlanta um, in the mountains of, of North Carolina and up through D.C., Philadelphia, New Jersey, uh, New York City and New England, uh, including Boston. So um, that, that's spread out over the next two or three days. Uh, but, you know, four inches of rain is quite a lot of rain uh, to get in a span of 12 to 24 hours. So there could be some, you know, small stream flooding. Um, the biggest thing I'm worried about as far as inconvenience factor is uh, slow down on the highways um, during this time. You know, a lot of people are going to be traveling for the next few days. Um, we get heavy rain, um, you have some cold air in place right now. Um, so we could get a little bit of icing on, on the front end of the storm as it first hits uh, over the next two days or so. So um, again, the storm will be moving mostly from um, Texas where it is right now up through the southeast um, and up to the east coast and New England um, over the next two days. So as, as the storm um, kind of first uh, first hits your area. You can see some snow flurries and some light icing and that sort of stuff on the roads right at, at the beginning. Um, that's maybe some of the most dangerous time. Um, and then after that, the rain will really you know, start coming in pretty heavily over the next 24 hours wherever you are. So, um, so the peak will probably be you know, Atlanta, Charlotte tomorrow. Um, and then um, the heaviest rain of the entire storm will be basically from D.C. to Boston um, on Wednesday morning. Um, and that kind of looks to be the, the, the worst of it. Um, so things will slowly start to clear out um, Wednesday evening. And then um, by Thursday, the, most of the country will be in pretty cold air, you know, sub-freezing air all the way down to the Gulf Coast, which includes the maybe the, the northern suburbs of um, Houston and New Orleans could get to the freezing point. So cool pretty much everyone. But, but uh, clear skies by Thursday. Clear skies at that point, yeah. So we should be getting some, some blue sky at that point on, on Thursday. But the wind will be quite strong still. 
in the Northeast. Um, so you, it'd be one of those cold, blustery winter days with blue skies on Thursday. So maybe some complicated football weather, complicated um, giant Thanksgiving Day parade balloon weather <laughs> with all the wind. But um, but hopefully travel on Thanksgiving Day itself won't be too too dangerous for people that are, are being rebooked or they may have delays or cancellations on the day before. That's funny. There's there's some debate as to whether the busiest travel day of the year in the U.S. is the day before Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving itself, and it sort of depends on on uh, how you count it or what modes of transportation you you include. Let me go to one more map here. I think that kind of sums it up and um, is probably <coughs> useful to to for people to look at this. So so this is essentially where it's going to rain versus where it's going to snow, right? Exactly, yeah. This is looking at a moment in time on, I think this is um, when early Wednesday morning. So this is kind of the peak of the storm. Um, the day previous, um, we'll have, you know, tomorrow, basically Tuesday, um, there's a, a, li a little bit more red, a little bit more ice. On, on, so, we, so the blue is snow, the red is ice, and the green is rain. Um, there'll be a little bit more snow and ice, but much lighter. Um, amounts on Tuesday as far as the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic. So going into Wednesday, this is when the really, really heavy rain starts. And uh, you can see snow and ice basically on the west side of the Appalachians and then all rain on the east side. Got it. Thank you. So I have a few more questions uh, of my own and then um, start interspersing with uh, questions we've gotten from from readers and your followers on Twitter. Um, so we're still calling this a nor'easter, even though for most people experiencing it, there, there's not going to be much, if any, snow? Uh, yeah. Um, and that's, it's been kind of a little bit controversial in the, in the, in the weather circles <laughs> about the name of the storm, because it's not at all a classic nor'easter. Um, but I feel like that name kind of caught on, and that's what we started calling it in our first first post. And um, I, I kind of backed off on that name a little bit on the second po post and called it more of like a blend of a nor'easter and a tropical storm hitting, you know, right on the busiest travel day of the year. So, okay. um, so you know, depending on where you are in the country, it could be, you know, it, it's a it, it could be a mostly snow event. You know, if you're in the Poconos, or if you're in Central PA, or um, even as far south as you know Asheville, North Carolina, or something like that, could be getting a lot of snow and ice, uh, mostly snow and ice for this event. Um, if you're anywhere you know east of there, um, from from you know the coastal Carolinas all the way up into New England, even including New Hampshire, which normally gets snow in nor'easters this is going to be an entirely rain event. Um, so it, it really kind of depends on where you are. It's, this storm is really going to have something for, ev for everyone. <laughs> it, it's going to be kind of everything all wrapped in together. So, but um, but most, mostly it's going to be a heavy rain event and high winds as well on the coast, on the immediate coast. So messy and unpleasant at, at bare minimum. And then, depending on your mode of transportation, if, if you are going somewhere uh, for Thanksgiving, it will you know you should expect you should expect delays uh, whether you're whether you're driving or or, or flying or, or possibly taking the train. Uh, maybe 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 walking uh, down the block to your to your neighbor's house is the only safe <laughs> mode of transportation. It seems like. But wear a rain jacket. <laughs> sure. Um, so. So yeah, so I, I think in general this is probably a better scenario than if it was a classic nor'easter because, it, I mean, we would never get really, you know, three to four inches equivalent of snow just because this is tapping into the tropics and so it's kind of getting a lot stronger than it would have if it would have been a strictly snow system. Um, but, you know, if, if this was a strictly snow event, we'd be talking easily more than a foot of snow in New York City, which you know would 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 be on the verge of of slowing things down pretty pretty drastically in, in New York City, um, if you, if you got more than a foot of snow. 
But um, since this is going to be an entirely rain event for New York City, um, I think, you know, the, the travel troubles may not be as severe as they would. You know, you're, got, you're not going to have to de-ice planes. They're not going to have to, um, you know, slow down on the highways as much as you would have. But, you know, heavy rain at times is going to slow down um, highways as well. So it's not going to be completely trouble-free by any means. Got it. So uh, a very common question we have been getting on Twitter, um, including from one user, Anna, is simply when is the worst of it? So I know that depends on where you're talking about. But if we, if we confine ourselves to Washington, D.C., up to Boston, sure. and you said Wednesday morning is, mm -hmm. is the worst of it. Is, is it too early to get more precise than that? No, I, I think we're I think we're pretty much I would say yesterday at this time it would have been too early to know. Um, right now, you know, starting with this morning's weather models, they've really kind of all solidified on one single solution. So um, I think we're getting pretty confident now that the timing is actually moving a little bit faster than it was, you know, a couple days ago. So so we're going to be hitting, you know plus or minus 12 hours to include all of the impacts. We're going to be hitting, let's say, um, you know, midnight to 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning would be the worst of it. That, that means um, that starting Tuesday evening, you know, Tuesday 6 p.m. or so, you can see some snow flurries and some maybe some light icing uh, because it's still pretty cold, you know, in, in the northeast right now. The rain will slowly start to get heavier overnight, and then, um, you know, pretty heavy rain constantly from about midnight until noon on um, on Wednesday, and that would be the peak of the storm on in the northeast. Got it. So, um, the all right. So that that. That that helps. Uh, the that sounds that sounds actually like that will mitigate some of the issues. I mean, too, early Tuesday morning, uh, or excuse me, uh, Wednesday morning is certainly better than uh, the Tuesday, middle of the day. Wednesday evening. Sure. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So when Wednesday evening um, in the Northeast, still going to get some some rain. Um, there's even talk of some snow on the backside. Uh, so as the storm moves out. Um, it will pass into Maine and uh, up into Quebec and Canada. Um, then that'll start bringing back, back the cold air in on on the, the far side of the storm down into um, you know DC to Boston area. So there there's talk of even up to one to two inches of snow on Wednesday evening as the storm moves out um, after all the heavy rain falls in New York City. So. Um, that kind of would be a little bit of icing on the cake, but it could end up making things pretty dangerous. You know, if you get four inches of rain during the day um, on Wednesday, let's say in in New York City or Connecticut, um, and then you get this massive blast of cold air, which is what's forecasted. You know, the temperatures are going to be down into the teens and twenties on um, on Wednesday night into Thursday morning. That's all. That rain is going to freeze. It's not going to have time to get down into the gutters and into the sewer system. So, especially when we have um, leaves still clogging the storm drains in the city, there's going to be a lot of frozen puddles in New York City and Manhattan on Thursday, on Thursday morning and, and Wednesday night. So, so that's going to be a little bit dangerous too. So, if you're driving late Wednesday night, you know, if you get off work on in Wednesday and you drive for five hours from Boston to D.C or six hours, or however long it takes, um, there could be some icy patches on the road during that time. So they'll be probably be the, you know, the, the Department of Transportation trucks out and salting and sanding the roads at that time. Got it. Well, that's interesting. I mean, we, we, we got some questions about uh, very specific travel plans. And just to compare to, I and mean, someone asked about, uh, D. Shahab asked about traveling by bus start, starting Wednesday at 2 p.m. from New York City to Richmond. And based on what you're saying, it sounds like, all things considered, he's heading in the right direction at the very least. 
Exactly. Yeah. If you're heading southbound, then um, you're gonna it's gonna pass a lot quicker for you than if you're heading northbound. Yeah. If you're going if you're going New York City to Boston on Wednesday evening, you're gonna you're gonna be right you're gonna be following the peak of the storm the entire drive. Um, <laughs> on the on the other on the other side, if you're going the other direction, then you're gonna get out of it pretty quickly. Even though it, it may end up getting colder, uh, you know, on that drive and a little bit more troubles with ice. Um, I feel like yeah, you're you're right, Zach. You're going in the right direction at that point. Versus Kevin Clamato, who's heading from New York City to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania on Wednesday morning. Um, yeah, that, no, good. Yeah, that'll be a, a <laughs> bit of a treacherous drive, right? Yeah, because you're driving up over the Poconos, and um, you're going to get right through the heart of that ice and snow on the backside. So, um, so basically from from the mountains of West Virginia up through Central PA. Um, sorry, phone. <laughs> if you're going up through um, from the mountains of West Virginia through Central PA up into Western New York, there's going to be a foot to two feet of snow from the storm. Um, and I haven't really been talking about that much because not as many people live there as they do on the East Coast. So, uh, but but this is going to be a major winter storm for those for those places. Well, if you're if you live in that area and you and you're planning to stay put, that'll be a really nice white Great. Thanksgiving. Yeah, sure. Um, so, go ahead. Um, an, another another question um, we've been getting, looking past the storm, and, and you alluded to this uh, to this earlier, is the Thanksgiving Day parade in uh, in New York City. So so there have been you know in prior years um, when you know winds have gusted up to 40 miles per hour, um, some trouble with those balloons. I mean, there, there, there's been some, actually some very dangerous incidents with the, mm -hmm. that the parade, you know, says it has addressed uh, with, with better technology now, but mm -hmm. uh, with balloons getting out of control or deflating. Um, I know Wasn't there a story where, where one of the balloons hit a lamppost and the yeah. lamppost fell and hurt someone seriously? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think that was <laughs> in the late 90s. And... Um, so I know you can't predict what the balloons will do, but um, can you tell us at least how windy it's likely to be in New York City on on Thursday morning? Yeah, it's not going to be ideal balloon weather by any means. <laughs> um, so yeah, during the peak of the storm on Wednesday in New York City, um, you're looking at gusts, uh, sustained winds of of up to 40 miles an hour wow. on when on Wednesday. Um, some gusts, you know, on the New Jersey shore, uh, south shore of Long Island, um, up into Cape Cod, and including possibly New York and Boston could be 50, 60, maybe even 70 mile an hour wind gust for brief moments. Um, and that's on Wednesday during the peak, but once the cold front goes through Wednesday night, um, the, the rain will clear away, you know, it'll be seemingly a little bit uh, less dangerous, but then the wind will s re remain pretty strong during that whole time. So we're talking easily 25, 30, 30 35 uh, mile an hour winds in uh, New York City on Thanksgiving morning. Um, so yeah, that's not going to be great for for those um, for those floats and the balloons. And then forget the balloons. How about if for those just braving the <laughs> the parade uh, and and trying to view it from uh, from the sidewalk. Mm. If we're already talking about pretty cold temperatures on Thursday morning with those mm. sort of winds. Uh, yeah. Not to be on the spot, but can you calculate what what we might be talking about with the wind chill? Yeah, I, I think in in New York City Thursday morning, you'll there'll be single digits uh, wind chills. Um, so we had I think uh, this morning um, and yesterday morning there were wind chills in the teens already in in New York City. So um, it's going to be a little bit, it's going to feel about like it, it did this morning and yesterday morning, but maybe even a little bit colder. So um, temperature, yeah, temperatures in the teens and 20s and, and wind chills in the single digits possibly in New York City on Thanksgiving morning. So not great. I mean, yeah, if you wear like three coats if you're going to go out <laughs> to watch oh, the parade. And, you know, if you want to make some quick cash, maybe go out and, and set up a hot chocolate stand or something. <laughs> I'm going to watch the uh, watch the parade on Telf Efficient. Or, yeah, that's probably even better. <laughs> the, um, so, so with all this rain, is there 
is there any chance of flooding on the coast? Um, yeah, that's a good question because um, you know in in previous major nor'easters we've had a problem with coastal flooding in New York City, just like we were get, getting hit by a hurricane. It's the exact same process is happening. Um, you have the the storm is driving um, ocean water into the coast, you know, via the strong winds. Uh, the central air pressure of the storm is so low that it's literally sucking the water up into the sea. That, that it adds an extra one to two feet on top of the high tide um, at that point. So we're going to see a little bit of that. Um, but the good news is, is that we're hitting, um, the storm is going to be hitting right during the, um, um, the midpoint between the full moon and the new moon, which are, um, in the tide cycle, those are the lowest high tides. So we're going to have a little bit of the moon on our side here. Um, so we, we, it won't really be a major coastal flooding event at all. Um, that's what the current forecasts are. So um, but in, in inland, um, we've been g going a pretty severe drought over the last 90 days um, in the northeast. Um, I know if you don't count the storm, um, the last uh, the last 30 days, the month of November in, in New York City itself has been the driest on record, um, wow. going back to 1869. So um, uh, about three inches of, of rain um, um, this month. So um, so that it's going to double it in this one single storm. So um, the, the ground is pretty dry right now. The streams are a little bit lower than they normally would be. So you're not going to see as much flooding as if we had had, had uh, normal rainfall during the last 90 days. Let me ask you about those stats for a second. I mean, I guess when it rains, it pours. But is that, I mean, that seems unusual to go, you know, to go from a uh, abnormally dry month, not just abnormally dry, mm. but potentially record dry month sure. until, until this event, to a... Um, a, a rare, or I mean, you tell me, unprecedented mm -hmm. storm uh, like this. I mean, so so maybe it's two questions. I mean, is, sure. is is that dynamic unusual? And then how unusual is is the storm that's heading uh, to? Well, the we saw we caught we saw kind of the same thing in Colorado earlier this year, where they've been going through 12 to 18 months of drought, um, and then they had quite literally an unprecedented flood event on the front range, you know, from Boulder, Fort Collins, Denver, um, where they got 12 plus inches of rain in this period of five days, which is almost like an entire annual rainfall total in five days. Um, and they had been in a, a really, uh, you know, severe drought up to that point. Uh, so sometimes, I mean, sometimes you go through pattern shifts. Um, um, that, that is one of the the facets of climate change that we're expecting is that more extreme events. So whether that may mean drier droughts or wetter floods, you know, more more of the um, the atmosphere is kind of concentrating into into these um, more extreme events. So it, it makes sense in in the sense that you know if you have more energy in the system, let's say. Um, there's more evaporation because there's more heat in the atmosphere. That's going to make, um, you know, drier areas will evaporate quicker, and that all that that rainfall will go feed into the storm systems, which will rain out more rain. So um, that that's kind of what we're seeing occasionally happen now. Um, and uh, you know, I'm not saying that. That this is this is totally a normal event. What's what's happening this week, um, the the East Coast nor'easter, um, but there are you know those little subtle hints where we're starting to see the odds shifted a, a little bit towards more increasingly extreme weather. Got it. Um, well, that's really helpful. The let's uh, jump ahead for a second to the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, uh, the uh, you know traditionally considered uh, one of the largest shopping days of the year in the U.S. Uh, looks like I guess it will be clear in terms of precipitation for most of the United States, but mm. freezing cold. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, like I said earlier, um, we're going to have um, um, below zero, you know, below zero Celsius freezing um, temperatures for the vast majority of the United States, from um, you know, from basically Dallas to Atlanta to the entire East Coast. Uh, we'll all be below freezing um, that morning. So, um, in, there's been a little bit of research that's that's shown that um, temperatures that are seasonally cold um, during you know the holiday shopping period actually drive retail sales higher because they um, they kind of put the shopper in the holiday spirit. So you, 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 if you're rooting for increased retail sales, you want to have cold weather, um, not so cold that people don't want to go outside, but cold enough um, that kind of that kind of drives the sales for you know coats and sweaters and as well as you know um, holiday gifts um, during that period. So it, it'll actually be a, a pretty ideal uh, setup for that. As long as you're not uh, waiting on lines starting at midnight for the local <laughs> Walmart to open. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that makes sense. All right. Well, that's really useful. So I, I, um, I think we've covered most of most people's questions uh, regarding how the storm is, uh, is going to track. Uh, just to review, it looks like for much of the northeast U.S., um, on Wednesday morning between midnight and 6 a.m., is really the worst of the storm. Is that is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. You have to add about six hours onto either side of that to capture kind of the full extent of the heavy rain and snow and, and ice. So I would say generally on the east coast from the end, you know, afternoon hours on Tuesday all the way up to afternoon hours on Wednesday will be kind of the peak of it. Got it. Uh, with the storm moving from south to north? Yes, with the storm moving generally from, you know, um, Atlanta, southeast United States, through um, D.C., New York City, and Boston. Got it. Uh, up I-95, like up, yeah. the rest of America. Northbound on I-95. <laughs> um, all right, and, and, and then so one, one geeky question just to, to cap us off. Um, this is the same storm as we talked about earlier that um, has been affecting the lower portion of the U.S., caused a lot of delays <laughs> at um, Dallas-Fort Worth Airport <laughs> yesterday. Um, is the um, it, you, you also said, though, in your latest update that the storm will be joining up with a cold front from in Canada right now. Um, yeah. What is what's the effect of that, and what is that ultimately going to do to the storm that it wouldn't, you know, that we wouldn't otherwise see? Sure. Yeah. So, um, in uh, meteorologists call this process phasing. So you may see that on a few other uh, blogs talking about the storm. So what happens is um, storms like this exist in three dimensions in the atmosphere. They don't just, you know, the rain doesn't come just, you know, from the lower levels of the atmosphere. So there's a three-dimensional structure to, um, to the storm. So uh, we have one, one part of that uh, storm is um, kind of the main energy of that storm, you know, the, where, where the moisture is coming from, um, tracking along the Gulf Coast. So since, since the storm rotates counterclockwise, it's, br it's bringing up on, on the east side, it's bringing up a bunch of tropical moisture um, and it's basically you. It's basically as as the storm um, from from Canada also moves eastward, they're moving generally in the same uh, direction. The the two low pressure centers will actually merge into one, and that process is called phasing. So um, so that means that the the southern uh, storm will be bringing up all the tropical moisture and joining that in with the cold air from the northern storm. And um, the, when that process happens, there's a lot of energy that's released, which um, makes the storm intensify even more. So you see the central pressure of the storm uh, start to decrease pretty rapidly uh, during that process, um, which actually um, 
gives the storm more energy to pull up even more moisture from the south and bring down even more cold air from the north and then um, you know the storm continues to grow from there so that process ends when, when it moves north far enough north into Canada to where it kind of joins in with the general Arctic region so um, and that's kind of like what uh, meteorologists refer to as kind of like the graveyard of, of storms is is that area right around Greenland where all the storms kind of just meld into Greenland at that point and just generally like create a bunch of snow up there. So, <laughs> got it. The um, well, that that that's really helpful. So uh, I hope everyone listening to stay safe on Wednesday if you're traveling. Are you traveling? I know you're definitely not flying anywhere. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> I will be traveling from my house in Wisconsin up to the Twin Cities, so it'll be pretty cold, but um, won't be having to, to worry about a whole lot of, of snow. All right. Well, good luck with that. Safe travels. Thank you. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, and uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, to you as well. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks.